Ryan from E39 Source here today. We're going to work on my father's 2006 E60 M5. We're going to attempt a retrofit of factory Sirius XM radio. I have gotten serious with you guys many times before. We did a DIY on this car, my 2000 E39 M5 retrofitting factory Sirius back in about 2014. When I had my E46 330XI, we did that. Uh, we're about to put it in this car, though not on camera and now it's time that the newest car gets it. And it's weird, and this video is going to be long, and it's taken a ton of research. Um, I'll try to make this short. I'll, I'll put a little annotation below. If you want to skip to the DIY and ignore the background, then go to this time. Anyways, my dad bought this car in 2012. It's an 06. And uh, on the window sticker, BMW of San Diego CPO, CPO erroneously put that it had Sirius XM, and that was a selling feature to him. He was coming from a 2008 E70 X530 Si uh, that had Sirius and he knew he wanted it in the next car that he got. So he gets the car and couldn't figure out how to work, how it worked because it wasn't there. It's it's not installed. So took it back to the dealer. They said it was a mistake and uh, but it was pre-wired for it and it would be an easy $3,500 installation. And we thought that was crazy, $3,500 to add a radio. So we went to an aftermarket place and another aftermarket place, and everybody came back with the same number. So uh, at that point, he just bought one of those eBay kits and put it in on the dash, on the console, and it worked fine. But we had to run an antenna through the car, and it was a mess, and we don't want to do that anymore. And Oh man, there's some big projects happening with this car right now. Stay tuned. So now eight years later, we're finally going to do the job right. We're going to take advantage of the pre-wiring package and, uh, and figure out how to retrofit the, the factory Sirius in here. And of course it was so expensive because not only is BMW charging big money for labor, but they wanted to sell us new parts. And of course new parts are great, but they're now in LA, no longer available. And the BMW dealer's not going to quote used parts. So um, firstly, Here's the parts that we're going to need. I'll get to that in a moment. This is an installation instruction written by BMW. This is from BMW Canada Inc. as of May 2008. So it's a little bit outdated, but it does go through the steps that we need here to get the thing working. So uh, we can see a, a list of parts there. These have, well, the top one's been superseded. There's about 50,000 different part numbers for Sirius receivers for these cars. I don't understand why. I kind of recommend going to eBay and just typing in E60 M5 Sirius tuner and buy one that was taken out of one so you know it works. They all came with nav. I don't know if E60s didn't come with nav, if like base 528s in 2004 didn't have nav or what, or if it matters. I don't know anything about, I don't know as much about the E60s as I do the E39, so we're going to do my best here. This is a seven page PDF. Um, we've got to do a little bit of wiring. We've got to do some coding, which is what I, I dislike about these newer generation cars. You can't just add a feature and have it work. You have to go in and turn it on and tell the car that it now has sunglasses so it can look through them. It's just stupid. Um, so really, we don't need too many parts. I suppose we can start with that. We, of course, need a serious tuner. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll elaborate a bit more on that in a few minutes because there's a million different part numbers for it. We need the bracket that bolts the tuner to the chassis. Then we need three or four of these body clips that will allow bolting the bracket to the chassis. And then, of course, we need a handful of small bolts that will be used not only to install the module to the bracket, but the bracket to the chassis as well. So uh, you can kind of see some of these part numbers. I will link them down below. I don't think reading them off helps anybody. Um, they will be linked and listed in the description below this video. Just click more and it will pop down. Now, early cars. And this is a really early car. This is a September 2nd, 2005 production. Uh, the VIN number, if anybody's interested, is B is in Bravo, 581094 probably won't be able to focus on that, but B581094. And if you look at option S693A, you will see that on this car, it says rear speaker system. What the hell does that mean? It's got the Logic 7 that all these cars came with, but rear speaker system. If you look up that VIN on a slightly newer, or that option code on a slightly newer E60 M5, it will say serious preparation. So, they, they put the Sirius pre-wire kit in this car, but called it something else, and then renamed the S693 option code to say Sirius preparation. I am pretty sure that all E60 M5s are pre-wired for Sirius radio. Now the next thing is, well, where is it? What is the factory location? So we open up the trunk, that springs open, and firstly we will need to remove this carpeting down here at the bottom, and it's not held in with anything. You just fight a little bit and get under a tab, get under a corner of it, pull it out, and stick it somewhere safe. 
The next thing we need to do is remove this trim back here where the E39 has a lovely door. I don't know why that didn't work for them in the E60. They put this fixed trim panel in here. Thankfully, it's fairly easy to remove. There are two fasteners that hold it in. You can use a flat head or just use your fingers. Turn it 90 degrees so the slot is vertical and pull it out. There's another one on the inside right here. And this one's a little bit, a little bit trickier, but we turn it 90 degrees so the slot is vertical and wiggle it out. Now we can grab it here, pull out this way, and it hinges out of the way. It's got these little fingers that stick off the side. There's one here and there's one here, and they go into this hole and this hole. So now we've removed the trim, and we'll just leave that here in the trunk. We don't need any more space. Now we're looking back here um, at the Logic 7 amplifier, which is this big thing. We can see the back of the tail light and this little cubby that I don't know what that's for. There's just a cubby that's bolted on there very well. Now the Sirius module and bracket will be installing here. We can see there's a little bit of a cutout. We're gonna slide the body nuts on that one. Not that one, the second one, the one that's hiding back there. So there's two. And then we have a third one up here. And that might be it. I don't think there's a fourth. Now we want to look for the pre-wiring. The pre-wiring is really easy to find. It's right here. And there's going to be two cables that we're looking for. One cable is your power, your um, audio to the amp. I think those are the green wires. And then whatever communication goes up to the front of the car and displays it on the iDrive navigation screen is all in this wire. The second wire should be pink, and this is where things get complicated. Early cars manufactured before, and I believe this is true, March 1st, 2006, have this weird, funky, Sirius XM, old as heck, two pin antenna cable. And there's two antenna wires in there. One of them is traditional XM that runs up to the shark fin, and that's where the antenna is. The other one is an FM terrestrial kind of antenna that why they built it into this Sirius module, I don't know, but it's there. Okay, I'm gonna interject here for a quick minute. So I found this from BMW North America, dated July 2009, and it looks like BMW thought about this, and they thought about, well, what if somebody has the old the early two pin Sirius antenna and they want to replace the module or need to replace the module to a newer one. So they released some instructions here and the meat and potatoes is, uh, is here on the second page and they give us a part number right up there at the top. Of course, I will link it below uh, with an adapter kit that comes with two FACRA adapters. One of them you will use. It will just depend on your radio and your specific installation process, but uh, shows you which one is the Sirius antenna and you just take the connector apart, take the Sirius antenna out, discard the other one that's no longer used and pop the new adapter on the end and now you've adapted your two pin to a one pin. So ultimately now if you have an older car this gives you the freedom to use a newer module if you want. And the best part is that part number is not only still available, it only costs five dollars. So these wires are hidden right here. There's a couple of zip ties holding them in place. I've already cut those zip ties and now we can just pull them out from behind that bracket and here they are and they're gonna feed our module like that. So um, this is gonna be step one, is installing the module and the bracket and the hardware and plugging it in. Step two is going to involve pulling down this um, carpet trim here and there's a bunch of green wires and it goes into a block called the MOST block. It's an acronym, I don't know what it stands for, M-O-S-T. It's those green wires right up there and we're gonna need to do some pinning in there and move some pins around and I'm probably gonna have to crawl in the trunk and wear a headlight and it's gonna suck. But let's do the easy part, install the module, then we'll mess with the most block, and then part three will be programming the car and telling it that it has a new feature. And then, of course, step four will be activating the radio um, subscription service with Sirius. I know this is long-winded, but I'm trying to save you guys the research and give you the information that I have found over the past several days. This is an early module. You can see that it has the two connectors we're talking about. This is the audio and the... It's not iBus on the E60, but whatever the, the multimedia interface is, connector. And then the antenna's over here, and it's got this weird, funky, two-pin kind of antenna. And the part number for this module is up at the top there, 6512, and ends in 064. 
this is the last module that still supports the two pin antenna. The next version of this module, uh, we can actually look at the production date. This thing was manufactured August 5th, 2005. So this is pretty much a period, period correct module that would have come in this car if whoever built the car optioned it with Sirius. I just bought the one that's gonna fit with our car. So we'll take the module out of here, or the, um, excuse me, the bracket out of the bag and see that it's very convoluted looking. We're gonna have to hold it up there and flip it around a couple different ways to figure out which way it goes. Uh, step one will probably just be installing uh, these. I think we're only gonna need the three, but, uh, but we'll verify that in a minute. And uh, using these bolts to attach everything together. We're gonna to use three of our bolts to attach the Sirius module to the bracket. It looks like this, just make yours look like mine. We can look through here and kind of see some of the part numbers. How nice of them to leave a large hole for us to do that. Um, the next step will be to take three, you only need three of these things. I don't know why I got four, they're like 40 cents, whatever. Take three of them and uh, they very easily slide into the holes I showed you before in the trunk. If you skipped that part of the video again, it is right here. Not the first one, but the second one, just hidden behind the amp. And then up top here, kind of hidden by the spring, and they slide on so the smooth side is out facing us now. Now installing the module in the car, we put the long part of it down like this, and it's gonna have to kind of twist a little bit, and it really only goes the one way, and it sits at a weird angle. We're probably gonna wanna plug the sucker in first, well, we can still access that a little bit more easily, but that's how it will go. Okay, the module's two-thirds in, and I wanted to stop real quick here and make a couple notes. It does make a little bit of sense to plug it in before, just because it'll be more difficult to get to that. Um, but the wiring harness, the pre-wiring harness here, has this little white peg thing on it that so thoughtfully fits in this little hole and provides some very nice cable management for us. And uh, I verified, thank you Nick for your help, uh, with another E60 M5 owner that has this system from uh, from factory and it installs like this with the white part sticking out so it presses in from the back. Now the third mounting point is back here right behind the amp and I'm not saying it's impossible to try to feed one of these bolts in there but you're probably going to drop it about 10 times. You could use an open-ended wrench or a ratcheting wrench to tighten it or you could pull the amp out. The BMW instructions state that we need to pull the amp out. I'm going to try it for like two minutes without pulling the amp out. If I can't get us there, then we're going to take this carpet down and pull the amp out, put the screw in, and then put the amp back. All right, seven seconds later, I lost patience with that. Carpeting comes down with two very traditional BMW pop rivet things. You just pry the middle of the pop rivet out with a tool like this or a flathead screwdriver or your fingernails. There is one here. There's a second one up in here. You pull the carpeting back. Now we have exposed three more black eight millimeter uh, machine thread bolts. And they're the same ones we've been using over here. So I took out one that was here. I took out another one that connects whatever this is to the amp bracket and a third one right here that holds the amp to the chassis. So there's another one hidden, hidden there behind the amp, but I don't think we need that one. We can just kind of move and ever so slightly bend this out of the way and gain a lot more room to the one missing serious bolt. So let's put that in and then put the amp back together. Easy peasy, everything's back in. We have successfully mounted the hardware portion of the Sirius XM retrofit. It's very nice of BMW to include us, the wiring, and even the management back here. After we've finished installing the Sirius module, uh, the, the hardware components over here, we can move on to the only wiring component, and that will be with the most block. To get even more room with the carpeting, we can actually remove the little cargo tie over here. So this one's still in the car. So if you move the metal part, the hook up, then use a screwdriver and pop off the black plastic trim, you will find a Torx. T40 bolt holding this little hook down onto the chassis. Remove the T40 bolt, rotate this thing 90 degrees, and pull it up and out of the way. Then we can push the carpeting over here like this, buys us a bunch more room, and we can get up and in there. Now the two blocks are held on to this uh, little plastic mounting support here with little tabs, and you'll want to use a small flat head screwdriver to get in there and press the little tabs. Stick the screwdriver in further than you think, and then press it one way or another until they slide off of each other. Then you can pop the tops off, the caps off of those blocks, which look like this. They've got a bunch of numbers on them. You can just use a flat head screwdriver to gently wedge it 
uh, from the back in between the cover and the rest of the body of the block and it comes off and you can stick that to the side. Now we can get a look at all the pins. So to supplement the PDF that I have linked, the installation PDF from BMW that I have linked down below, in the description, I've put together a bit of a diagram, and it's complicated, and don't let it confuse you. I'm just going to take a moment to explain this. So it's separated here into steps one, two, and three on the upper block and the lower block. The lower block is called X14255. As we can see here, X14255. The upper block is X14280, X14280. So initially, in the upper block, before we've touched anything, we can see that only pin five has um, a green wire running through it. And I'm just calling each one of these wires. I started here, I want A, B, C, D, so we can see where they move throughout the processes. Now, furthermore, we have kind of an upper and a lower side to both the upper and the lower block. And we determine that by seeing uh, the numbers one through five, they're only visible from one side of the block. And when the little tabs that allow you to pull these fiber optic cables out, they're not pins, they're not the little metal spring-loaded pins. There's these little black tabs that you just barely lift up with a flathead and then gently pull the wire and it allows you to pull that out. When those tabs are aligned down here over the one, two, three, four, five, that is considered the bottom of the block. The top block has a bottom and the bottom block has a bottom, and that's how it's, it's determined. The top of the block, you access those pins by turning it over 180 degrees, and now you can see the same five little tabs that you just pull out a tiny bit and then pull the wires out. Listen to that again if it didn't make sense. I, I'm trying to be as clear as I can. I know this is tricky, and the verbiage in here isn't much better. After I've completed the wiring, this is the top block, otherwise the X14280. When you pop off the cover, you are now looking at the bottom side of the connector. So we flip it over so we can read the numbers. And now we can see at the bottom, they are clearly labeled one through five. And also at the top, the bottom of the connector, as in down here, uh, will be right there. Those are the little tabs I'm talking about. Uh, just above the numbers one through five that if you put a flathead screwdriver in like right in there and then pry up That will allow you to pull the wires out and as you push them in you'll hear a snap as they snap back into place So initially uh, we just remove both of these wires from the bottom of the block in pin five from visible from the front You pull the tab and you pull the wire out Then you flip the thing over 180 degrees You pull the tab and you pull the wire out but label these use some painters tape or some masking tape or whatever and put a uh, it's called SDARS, are these connectors for the Sirius, um, SDARS1 and SDARS2 on my diagram A and B. Uh, so now we move down to the bottom block, we pop off the cover again, and what we're going to do is move one through four. Now I only have three. If you had a fourth, you'd, you'd move that as well. So move one, two, three, all of them over one. See what, see what happened here? We move one to two, two to three, three to four. So now instead of one through three being populated, I have two through four populated, okay? The next step will be the bottom. On the bottom, we're gonna leave pin one. We're gonna take two, three, and four, if you have a four, I only have a two and three, and we're gonna move them over. So two to three, three to four. So we still have a one in the bottom, and we, we have an open two now, and then two went to three, three went to four. If you had a four, it would go to five. So now we're gonna take a or SDARS pin one and move it over to the top of the bottom block. See A is now in pin one on the top of the bottom block. And then we're gonna take B or SDARS pin two and move that over to pin two on the bottom of the bottom block. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So there's a bit of a cross here. That's what it's supposed to look like because that makes sense. At this point, we're ready to put the trunk back together, or I think I'm gonna take a stab at programming first. It wants us to use an application called Progman. Progman runs in a virtual operating system that BMW created called Triple S, SSS. And it's very, very, very antiquated. I've talked to a couple shops and they laugh and say, oh, we don't use that anymore, we use something else. I found some stuff online. I am going to attempt to use NCS Expert and NCS Dummy. Um, I hate using both of those pieces of software, but I found a pretty intuitive DIY online. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I don't know if it'll work or not, but we're going to try it. 
uh, to enable the Sirius or to retrofit or code or program the Sirius to be here. Okay guys, we're gonna talk a few minutes about coding here and how the Sirius XM needs to be programmed on the M5. So it needs to be added to the vehicle order. In general, the vehicle order is a list of the options that the car has. Uh, so it knows what kind of features it needs to be looking for and activating and also which ones it should not look for and not attempt to use or activate. Um, so I had hoped to do like a step-by-step -step in NCS that was two weeks ago. Um, I had to buy a PC. I ended up doing it on the Mac, but I ended up buying a PC to use as a dedicated INPA, ISTA, NCS, all the different crap that you need to code and program BMWs. I ended up doing it on, on here on the Mac in a Windows 7 virtual machine um, with NCS Expert, but I had to totally reconfigure my tool set to adequately work with the E60. Um, having said that, I was able to do it in NCS Expert. If you do not have experience in NCS Expert, I mean, I'm a, I'm a tech guy, I'm a nerd guy, and I could, I still don't know how to use the software. It took me and two of my smartest best friends on the phone for like four hours to figure out how to code this thing on. It is just impossibly challenging. Uh, but we got it. I don't really know what we did. We did something about 50 times and time number 50 worked. I don't know why the first 49 didn't. But what you're looking to do is modify the vehicle order and you want to add option S655A, which is satellite tuner, but you don't add S655A. You add dollar sign $655 and then click add. And then you look for S693A, BMW, or preparation for BMW satellite tuner, but that's called dollar sign 693. You find that and then you hit delete. Well, not that delete. They're talking about the actual delete key. On a PC, you have both a delete and a backspace key, right? The backspace goes back to take stuff out that you've typed. The delete is a kind of a different key. It deletes what's ahead of it. Macs don't have that. So if you're doing a VM, you can open up the on-screen keyboard, make the selection of what you want to adjust. Let's say I want to put a P there and then use, use this keyboard, which has a delete button right under the backspace key. What a freaking pain. So once you do that and you save the changes, to, uh, to the module, and you're gonna to wanna to do this in both the LRA and the CAS. The CAS is the general module for the car. So once you've made those changes, save it, cycle the key, turn it back on, and hopefully you see Sirius XM. If you've added 655 and removed 693, and you verify that it took those changes, go back in and read the vehicle order and ensure that this one's there and this one's no longer there, and it still doesn't work, you may need a step three. And it is step three here. You have to go into the CAPPL module and confirm that uh, SDARS is set to active. And I thank whoever I robbed this screenshot from here on one of the forums. Um, I did look at that and, and by the time I added this and removed that, it was already set to active. So I, I don't think you'll need to do that. But if you run into an issue, check that. It's also worth noting that other software may be able to uh, to modify the vehicle order. I don't know if ISTA can. Um, I know INPA cannot. So you pretty much just need to figure out how to use NCS. Installing it's half the battle. It takes a couple hours to figure out how to install it and configure it and find the right drivers and configure the COM port. And it's, it's just... It, unnecessarily complicated, but such is life. If you need more help than that, you probably want to find a shop to go ahead and, and enable that for you. And a BMW dealer might charge a thousand dollars for it, but an independent shop um, shouldn't be too much, maybe a hundred bucks, 150 bucks. It's a pretty easy thing to modify the vehicle order uh, when you know how to use the software anyways, and I'm getting there. So without further ado, I know this video has gone on way too long, but let's see what the sucker looks like, right? Now we're in the shop. I can't move this car outside because this is no longer connected to anything. So um, reception in here, I've actually been impressed with how good it is, but I can only imagine it would be better outside. So we'll stick the key in. We'll go to accessory mode. Um, this thing switches between channels really quickly, even inside, which I'm happy about. 
um, ignore the transmission fault. That is what SMGs do best. So initially what you'll need to do to activate this is of course call Sirius XM or go online and activate your account and activate this radio uh, for a subscription. And it's pretty simple. You leave the, the radio in here on channel 184. You go online, you give them your ESN number, which is an uh, identification number that identifies your specific uh, satellite radio module. And then you wait about five minutes, you put the car outside and let them activate it, turn it off, turn it on, and there it is. Um, there's a weird thing with check marks in this car that I'll, I'll show you in a minute. But to access the radio, we head on down to entertainment, and we've got this uh, hierarchy system here. So up at the top, we can choose between our FM, AM, weather band. Now the SAT option is there, hopefully. And of course, we still have our CD, so we'll select SAT for satellite radio. And then here in the middle, uh, back up a, a level in the hierarchy, we have three options. We've got categories, presets, and all channels. So uh, we'll start off with categories, and we get a lovely little list of all the different genres of music we can look listen to here. Uh, we'll head over to rock, make a selection, and then uh, here's the check marks I just talked about. So initially, almost none of these channels had check marks in here. I couldn't figure it out, and the ones that don't have check marks won't play. Um, seemingly, the more time this system is on and awake as I play with it in the car, more and more channels get check marks. And of course, we have a basic music subscription, not the, the big expensive one that includes all the sport and politics crap. Um, but maybe some of these wouldn't be included, so that would make sense. But certainly we should have the Tom Petty channel here on 31. So if I try to select 31, it will tell me to call Sirius to activate the radio. It gives the phone number a shortcut to call if you have that set up in the car. And then the radio ESN, which I have probably blurred out for you here. Uh, we'll go back and we'll go to a channel that does not have that warning message. We'll try the bridge, Sirius XM channel 32. It takes a quick minute to download the metadata. If I turn the radio up, it is playing. That's actually the longest it's taken to download metadata. Uh, but there it is. And I'm really impressed with the sound quality. I had a couple. I saw a couple people on forums complaining it wasn't good. I mean, this is every bit as good or better than the aftermarket one we had set up. I'm not an audiophile, but I would definitely complain if it were hissing or popping or were lo-fi. Um, so sound quality seems to be fine. It's not a super rich um, infotainment system here. I actually prefer the Mark IV and the E39 was miles ahead of this CCC navigation, the iDrive. I don't know how they went five years back with the system, but um, it does work. It's higher res, yes, but it's it's just so slow to navigate through the menus. But it does work, and it's built in now, so we can choose a different station here. Um, again, we're in the building, so downloading metadata here is a little bit slow. It does swap over in about a second and a half or two seconds though, which is pretty good for satellite radio. Back to the main menu, we can see our presets. This car allows you to store up to 12 different presets, uh, which are nice, but as far as I can tell, the only way to get to those presets is to come in here and go through this whole menu and go to entertainment and then satellite and then presets and then scroll. Using the next buttons on the steering wheel here just goes from channel 40 to 41 to 42 to 43. I can't seem to configure this button to go between presets, not between individual channels. We'll go back again up to the upper menu and then all channels is just a list of every channel that is offered here on Sirius XM and it takes a little bit to scroll with the iDrive wheel but you can come all the way down and see the entire list of channels um, and make a selection from there. So to add a channel to the, uh, the preset list, let's say we want to add channel 32 bridge. I'm pressing and holding the iDrive controller and up comes this little uh, message here where we can just go to store and then choose where we want to put it. I'll put it in preset number seven, hit OK, and there we've added bridge to preset number seven. So it's pretty intuitive if you've used car radios before. The E60 is just a weird car. We don't have preset buttons here. There's no preset buttons on the dash. There's no preset buttons on the wheel. So you have to go into iDrive, which is why everybody hates iDrive. All right, guys, thanks for uh, for hanging in with me this far. I know it's a long DIY, but I wanted to be pretty thorough and as comprehensive as I could, less that coding part. If you have to see how it's done, unfortunately, you probably want to have somebody take care of that for you, unless you're very well versed in NCS or a different application that can do the same kind of thing. So um, stay tuned with this car. You're going to see a lot more of it here. I've got part one of a big series coming up in the next couple of days. Um, so please stay tuned for that. If you have questions about this, about the wiring or the installation, I'm happy to help um, coding. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to help uh, very much there, but thanks for watching. I hope you guys are able to, uh, to get serious working in your 15-year-old V10 M5. Talk in the next video.